grace and peace to you all in Jesus' mighty name and welcome people of God to another edition of Faith is Natural here on God's Heart TV. Now today I want to ask you a very striking question that calls for contemplation. As Christians, why do we expect God's results when our decisions are so often rooted in worldly reason. Let, let me put it slightly a different way. Why do we expect God's results, heavenly, divine results, when our motives are so often fueled by earthly concerns? Now, I'm asking this question today, people of God, because I've observed a, a common behavior, a behavior I've seen repeated time and time again, where people tend to question God's sovereignty. Why is God allowing this to happen to me? Why, why, where, where is God in all of this? Does, does he not have the power to intervene? Why? They question God's sovereignty when they are hit by the consequences of the decisions they take outside the lights of his guidance and his governance. Because people of God, it's not just enough to have that, that passion that zeal for God. Look, that's good. But it's not just enough. You must be deeply grounded in the word of God. Because, yes, you are going to encounter the, the lures and the cares of this world. The, the trappings and trials, the ensnarement and entanglements of this world. Which can easily cause you drift, drift from the divine purpose of God for your life to the point where you end up taking decisions without reference to God. And inevitably, this will lead to a dead end. <sighs> now, when confronted by the reality of this, many people look at God in a bad light instead of looking inward to rediscover their roots. So that is what I want to talk about today, people of God. Because in this life, there are so many decisions. Life is full of decisions and there's no one who is above influence. No one in this world is above influence. So ask yourself right now, in this world where there are so many conflicting views, conflicting voices, what is the factor that holds sway in your heart? What is the prevailing factor in your heart when it comes to your daily life and decisions? What is your point of persuasion? Because those consequential important decisions we take, they're simply the overflow of the decisions we take day to day, hour by hour, minute by minute in this journey of life. So what is your point of persuasion? Is it carnal or spiritual? So I want to take you to a, a scripture and this is taken from the book of Acts chapter 27. Please take time to read all the, the story from verse 9 right to the end. 
So let me set the, the scene for you. Acts 27 from verse 9 to end. At this point, Apostle Paul has been arrested for his faith, for, for the sake of the gospel. And by the Spirit of God, he gave a warning concerning the journey he was to undertake by boats to Rome. He gave a serious warning of impending danger. And the Bible says in that verse 11 that the centurion, the Roman centurion, he listened to Paul. Yes, he heard this message from Paul, but he was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the thing spoken by Paul. Now, from, from a, a human perspective, it's entirely understandable that the Roman centurion would pay more attention to these professionals because they are qualified to speak authoritatively on this issue in the natural. And the helmsman and the owner of the ship, they said, yes, it's okay for the journey to go ahead. Even the next verse in verse 12, the Bible says that the majority agreed with that guidance. And the Roman centurion paid greater attention to the voice of the helmsman, the voice of the owner of the ship, the voice of the majority. Now, reading down the whole scripture, you will discover that the test of time proved Paul's prophetic warning. And the ship was caught in a terrible storm and was utterly destroyed. All those on board were saved by the grace of God through Paul's presence and the power of intercession. Now, what am I emphasizing with the scripture today, people of God? The Roman centurion's points of persuasion was carnal, not spiritual. He heard the voice of God. He listened to the voice of God through Apostle Paul, but he was more persuaded. He gave greater attention to the voice of the helmsman, the owner of the ship, the majority. When it comes to taking decisions, of course, there are many, many factors to consider. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with receiving counsel or advice. There's nothing wrong with that. But many today slip into the seeming safety net of taking decisions which are agreeable to the majority, often by responding emotionally or intellectually instead of listening, really listening to your heart where the voice of God whispers. Just take a moment and, and look at your life, examine yourself right now, ask yourself, what is the primary factor of influence in your decision making? Is it God? Is it the things of God first and foremost above all else? Or, or are we more moved by the prevailing opinions of the world, the accepted standards of society, the 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 strong voice of maturity that comes from experience in the world. What is your point of persuasion in your order of priorities? What is the position of God? Now, let me stress something here, people of God. Acting in faith does not necessarily mean acting irrationally just for the sake of it. <laughs> I'm not saying that 
oh, well, I'm a Christian. I must go against the crowd. I must go against the flow no matter what it is because I'm a Christian. No, faith should not be regarded as foolishness. There are times where discretion and divine direction align, where there's clear agreement between maturity that comes from experience and maturity that comes from faith. That's not what I'm emphasizing here. I'm stressing the key points that in your decisions, what motivates you more? The pressure of the majority or the principles of Christianity? Because as Christians, the principles of our faith, they are an integral part of us. <laughs> the decision to uphold those principles is, is non-negotiable, even in the face of pressure and, and tension and negative sense evidence. It's God first before anything or anyone else. That's faith. Faith is the word prevailing over sense evidence. People of God, ask yourself this. Is your heart word ruled or world ruled? Do you see God as your first resource or your last resource? What is the position of God in your life and your decision making? Because what dominates your heart determines your points of persuasion. Now, that's a reflection of your Christian journey. What prevails in your heart at the moment of decision, the moment of temptation, is a reflection of the state of your Christian journey. What is your point of persuasion? Is it carnal or is it spiritual? Well, when the word of God dominates your heart, your point of persuasion will be spiritual. You consider God first. Keep the Savior first in mind. Love Him above all. Seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, knowing that every other thing will be added in His time and His way. But if the Word does not dominate your hearts, there'll be a tendency for your point of persuasion to shift to the natural, to the carnal. You'll be easily moved by what you see, what you hear, what circumstances look like, how you feel, the opinions of people of, of this world. You'll find yourself easily compromised for the sake of trying to please man or, or please money. And thus you can be a believer, you can be a Christian, yet controlled by Satan's devices. Yes, we are in this world surrounded by so many influences. But you know the best influence? The best influence is the Holy Spirit. Why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. He told us in, in that book of John, chapter 16, verse 13, John chapter 14, verse 26, that the Holy Spirit has been sent to guide us into the truth, to, to teach us all things, to remind us of his words at the point of need. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. What's your part? What's your role? You must position yourself to be available for the Holy Spirit's influence. When the word dominates your heart, rules your heart, 
guides your heart, then the Holy Spirit will influence your decisions in the light of that word. If our hearts are too preoccupied with worldly concerns, how then can we be sensitive to his voice in our hearts? As I bring this message to a close, I want to read a scripture to you from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. It says this, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures here on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where Thieves can break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth, neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. The recognition that we belong to another world, that this world is not our home, that we're just here for a, a short season. That recognition bears such significance that it must weigh heavily on our daily considerations, our daily decisions. For where your treasure is, there your hearts will be also. As you ponder on this word, I want to lead you in a moment of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. In James chapter 4 verse 7, the Bible says we are to submit ourselves to God and resist the devil. If you examine your life, you would discover how much you willingly submit yourself to the devil each time your heart is dominated by worldly concerns. So right now, receive the strength to resist every demonic influence in your hearts. Whatever demonic influence in your spirits, be broken right now. Be broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Wherever that demonic influence manifests itself, be it in your marriage, your family, your career, your business, your finances, I say be broken, be broken. Be broken! Be broken right now! Whatever hindrance between your heart and the Holy Spirit, be removed! Be removed! Be removed right now! Let the Word of God prevail in your hearts. Let the Word of God prevail in your home, prevail in your marriage, prevail in your finances, prevail in your life. Let the Word of God prevail right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.